What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So, starting a dropshipping business part one. So starting anything new can obviously be quite daunting and overwhelming. Starting a business even more so because there's the time investment, there's the financial investment. Um, add to that the hundreds of different places and resources for information. Understandably, it can lead people to wanting to get things absolutely perfect and have all of their ducks in order before they pull the trigger and finally start that business. Unfortunately, because of the risks involved and all the different sources of information, and it tends to lead people to get into overwhelmed to the point they can spend months and months and months of doing research, watching videos, and never finally actually pulling that trigger and starting their business. You will not get better at running your business until you're running a business. You can't become a good business person by watching videos on YouTube, unfortunately. So what I thought I would do is put together my personal experience, um, given how long I've been doing dropshipping for now. I've helped a lot of people start dropshipping businesses too. So what I'm gonna do is take you through four different parts, four different steps, the different things involved in starting a dropshipping business, so you can follow along. And with each of these parts, I'm gonna give you my top kind of three to five tips to help you overcome the challenges that I see most beginners making. So what this will do is, it will force you to take action and progress naturally through creating and starting your dropshipping business. And it will also help you overcome those hurdles that might have been holding you back from finally pulling the trigger and jumping into this and giving it a go. So let's start with the four parts then. Part number one is your product. The most important part to any business without a product or service, obviously we're gonna have a Shopify dropshipping focus here. So without any product, without something to sell, you have no means of making any money. So this is usually the step where most people fall short at um, or fail to overcome because without a product, you don't need a supplier, you can't build a Shopify store and there's nothing to market. So this is usually the step most people get stuck on. And this is gonna be the first step in which we're covering today. Step two will be supplier, step three will be store on Shopify and step four will be marketing um, on social media. You have to do all four of these steps really well. You have to do them correctly. Think of these steps as like four concrete pillars and on top of those concrete pillars is your business. If one of those pillars falls down, your business falls down. You cannot have one without the other. For instance, you could, be, you could have a brilliant product, a product that nobody has ever seen before. You could have a supplier ready to go and deliver it to your customers. You can have a $10,000 Shopify store created, but if you cannot market it and you cannot put it in front of the correct audience, nobody's gonna know it even exists. Nobody's gonna buy it. You can have the same product, the same supplier, but a really crappy Shopify store that nobody trusts, brilliant marketing campaigns, Nobody's gonna trust the business, nobody's gonna buy a product. You could have a brilliant product, but a really crappy supplier that is cutting corners, rush in, and ultimately delivers a poor quality product that breaks, your business is gonna fall down because it's gonna to lead to angry customers, returns, and refunds. So you get the gist, you have to do all four of these things correctly. Before we go into the product itself then, uh, just a tip that I wanna go through because I think it's super, super important where most people as well tend to kind of fall at the first hurdle is they try and make progress too quickly. They try and run before they can actually walk. Because of the nature of the business, it tends to attract people who don't have an abundance of money and they see dropshipping as a rush, as an easy way to make quick money. This isn't their own fault. You only have to spend two minutes on YouTube to see different videos from different creators that say naught to 10K in two weeks in a month or naught to 100K or how I made 100K in my first month of dropshipping. And whilst yes, it is possible, it's not the typical reality for 99% of people who are gonna try at this business. So my first tip to somebody watching this video um, is when it comes to dropshipping, think slow, continuous progress over three plus months, unless you have experience. If you, are, if you need money sooner than that, starting a dropshipping business is probably not your best bet, unless you have the skills and experience um, to do so. If this is all brand new to you and you're looking to make some quick money because you have bills or expenses coming up that you have to pay for, dropshipping and starting a business probably isn't your best bet. I would only recommend starting a dropshipping business if you have 
about a thousand pounds saved up that you can afford to risk. And if it all does go wrong and you lose every single penny, it's not gonna affect your day-to-day -day life. You're still gonna put food on the table for your family. You'll still be able to afford to pay all your bills. Just make sure that when you are starting a business, basically that you are somewhat financially comfortable and the money you're gonna invest into your business you can afford to lose. If you come into this thinking, I need to make money in my first month, it's gonna to lead to you skipping corners, not doing work that's to the best of its ability, and in a month, you're really gonna to struggle to squeeze everything in when it comes to doing all four of these steps to the best they can be. So my first tip when it comes to selecting the product or niche is I recommend something that makes sense to you. Take it from me, money is not everything. I have started businesses in the past selling products that I do not care about in spaces I have zero interest in and no matter how much they make they become tedious it becomes a chore to run those businesses when it comes to producing content when it comes to produce to talking to customers when it comes to making creatives when it comes to doing all of those things when it comes to introducing yourself to somebody that you've never met before and having to say what kind of products you sell if it's something that you do not have an interest in it will become a chore i can guarantee you that yes it'll be nice in the beginning if it's really successful and it makes you money but in the end, it will become a chore, it will become tedious, and it will start looking for other things. That's just me though, that's just my personal experience. You may be completely different, of course. I just have found in the past that when I'm selling products I have a personal interest in myself, the business is a lot more enjoyable, and I find myself naturally putting more time into it. There's so many other advantages too when it comes to selling a product you have an interest and knowledge of yourself. So, to give you an example, then I play golf, so I know the language, I know the golfing lingo. If I was to write a caption to go in a creative to try and capture the attention of a golfer, I'd be able to do that pretty, pretty quickly, pretty easily, because I've spent num a number of years playing the sport and speaking the language. So for example, I could say something like, stop duck hooking your tee shots out of bounds. If you've never played golf before, you probably could never come up with that. You could probably never write that. You probably don't understand it either. And which caption is going to get more attention from golfers, from people who have an interest in golf and from people who are going to buy a golfing product? A caption like that, that they understand and is speaking the golfing language or a generic caption like stop hitting your clubs left and off the course. Both things are saying the same thing, but one is using the language that golfers understand. So when it comes to selecting a product, if you select something that makes sense to you, you have knowledge and interest in, everything else that follows comes a lot easier when it comes to writing marketing messages, when it comes to creating content, when it comes to selecting products, when it comes to understanding your target market and their pain points. I cannot stress it enough. Choosing something in a space you have an interest in is so much more advantageous. Tip number two, this is something that people struggle to get their head around as well, um, is on your Shopify store then you have two types of products. You have products that you advertise and sell and you will have filler products. There is a big difference between those. So whether you start a one product store, a niche store, a general store, you can have as many products as you want on that store, but they will be split into two categories. One will be products that you advertise and the other will be filler products. These will be products that you have on your Shopify store, but you, don't, but you probably don't create add creatives for them. And the biggest difference between these two products is your advertising products must have at least 20 pounds slash $25 of profit margin of room in there so you can afford to pay for your ads basically. So if you are buying a product from your supplier and for that supplier to deliver the product to your customer costs 10 pounds, you must be able to retail that and sell that on your Shopify store for a minimum of 30 pounds. I would recommend going as high as you can or, or somewhere at least around 25 or 30 pounds. If you can find a product that people are happy to pay and, you're ha and you can easily retail it for 30 pounds more than what you can buy it for, then it gives you so much more freedom and flexibility when it comes to step four, which is marketing. And this is the biggest difference. So of course, you'll have products on your Shopify store that you'll never get away with selling for more than 20 pounds. So you might have um, if we're going back to the golf niche, for example, if you find some um, little plasticky novelty tees, um, tees, there's not a lot of manufacturing process that goes into them. There's not a lot of materials, not a lot of skills, there's not a lot of engineering. Tees are a cheap thing. So no matter what tees you find on AliExpress, 
you're never going to be able to put 20 pounds on top of what that price is. Nobody's going to pay 20 quid for some tees. It's just not going to happen. Whereas if you had a golfing tool that aligns your elbow and there's a bit more process and thought and engineering and material um, has gone into it, then buying something for 10 pounds and selling it for 30 pounds is obviously going to be a lot easier. So the products that do have those 20 pounds or 25 dollars of margin sets you up to have the potential to sell profitably from the offset when you first start running your marketing campaigns. Then we have your advertising products must be either unique, new, or variations of past winners. So I haven't included in here how to find winning products because given my experience of working with people, it's not something people struggle with. You can pay 40 pounds now for product research software and in front of you in the space of 30 seconds, it's probably gonna put at least a dozen really, really good products in front of you. So when it comes to finding them, it's not a difficult thing to do. And that's what most people tend to think. They think they're struggling to find them when in reality, they're actually struggling to pick them. Like I said, you can pay to find winning products are very, very quickly. But when you actually have to pick one, that's where most people tend to fall short. The next products you pick must either be unique. So something nobody has ever seen before. Think back to step four, we're gonna be advertising on social media. Think of how busy it is as a platform. Think about how many other pieces of content you are competing against to get your audience's attention. If you are not selling something unique they've never seen before, they're just gonna scroll past it and they'll probably forget it within a matter of a few seconds. If you sell something unique they've never seen before and you have a really attention-grabbing creative, they're gonna stop and be curious and wonder what the product is. And that is the first hurdle you have to overcome. Marketing on social media is getting somebody to actually stop and consume your ad creative. And having something unique they've never seen before, they're much more likely to do. Think about viral posts, right? They're only viral for a certain amount of time because once somebody's seen it a dozen times, two dozen times, they get bored of it. It's the reason why things come in and out of trend. It's the reason why songs, for instance, will only stay in the top 20 for a few weeks and then come out. Because when you've seen the same thing over and over and over again, it becomes boring to listen to that same song again, to watch that same film again, or to watch that same piece of content again. And in the dropshipping space, it is becoming more competitive too. So if you sell something unique they've never seen before, you have a much higher chance of getting them to stop consuming creative. If you're selling a product that they've seen a dozen other advertisers, maybe even more, advertise and put a similar creative in front of them they're just going to scroll past it and think i've seen that before i'm not interested so that covers unique then we have new new is very similar so new is obviously going to be different person to person that you cannot control within your audience and having an established relationship also with a supplier which is going to be difficult to do in the beginning is also where this comes in but it certainly doesn't hurt to send messages to certain suppliers or contact um, the agent you're working with and say what are you working on or what is a new product that you've released in the last couple of months? I'll give you an example of this. So um, I started dropshipping in 2016. I went to China in 2017. Um, luckily I had a bit of a mentor really um, when I was over there. It was somebody with tons and tons of experience of importing from China, but when it comes to dropshipping, he didn't have a clue. So we both kind of naturally gelled. Um, and one thing he said to me was when you go on a stall, um, ask them what's new, what are you working on? What are you going to be releasing or what um, can I be one of the first people to sell basically because all new things most things are manufactured in China and if they are making something new the chances are the world hasn't seen it before and I went through the pet um, area I say area it was like 1k by 1k it was absolutely massive um, and one thing I discovered was these bones that had different flavors to them so you could get cheese ones you'd get peanut butter ones you could get bacon flavored ones um, and that was a product I ended up advertising and being I don't want to say one of the first few people, but it certainly wasn't one of the typical dropshipping products that everybody else had kind of jumped on the bandwagon. It was something new and exciting that people hadn't seen a lot before. And I was able to make a lot of money selling those products because they were new and not seen a lot before. Another quick and easier way of doing this is going on to AliExpress and putting new in or putting in new 2024 and seeing what products don't have the massive order numbers and seeing what products, again, this is where it comes back to being an advantage if you have 
an interest and knowledge of your space and niche because if you haven't seen it before and it's in a space that you naturally spend a lot of time in then again if it's exciting for you it's probably going to be exciting for your market for your niche for your customers as well and last but certainly not least we have variations of past winners this is probably one of the easy ones so you can go on Jeff Spy, you can go on Miner, you can go on Shop Hunter and find a product that's doing a million dollars of sales a month um, look at why it's doing that. So what is the pain point that it's doing? Then find a product that does exactly the same thing, but it looks different. It's a different color. It's in a different material. Um, it's in a slightly different shape. Whatever it may be, just find something that does exactly the same thing, but looks different. And this is one of the quickest and easiest recipes, at least in my own opinion, um, when it comes to finding a successful winning product. To give you a quick example of this, check out a company called Ace Mend, and that's Ace Mend. They sold a back stretcher, which was a foam wedge, which was a different variation of a proven past seven figure winning product, which was a back stretcher in the same shape with the same bubbles on, except it was made of plastic. So they sold a product that did exactly the same thing, but it was made out of a different material and it looked different, different colors, and they marketed it really, really well too. And so with that being said then guys, that is pillar number one, which is the product and niche. If you've stuck with me this long, I really do appreciate it. I hope I've helped you out or at least cleared up some of those hurdles or sticking points for you. Um, if you have, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know which one I've helped you with the most. Before you go, if you would like some help, some hand holding through this entire process, I do have a mentorship program working one to one with myself. Over the course of one, two, or three months, you get to choose the duration. If you are interested in that, what you need to do is head to the video description below this and click that mentorship call link. It will take you through a very quick interview process, two to three minutes max. It's half a dozen questions, a chance for me to kind of get to know what stage you're at now and where you want to be with my help. And if you have a realistic goal and you're committed to this, then it will take you through to my calendar where you'll be able to book a time and date for me and you to jump on a Google Meet and have a chat in a bit more depth. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.